I've, I've just been a big dreamer. And I think I inherited that from him and I saw that from him. Because if you see it, you, you're going to believe it, right? I went $200,000 into debt my first two years in. So two years in, I owed my supplier $200,000 plus whatever I owed in tax, right? People, people on the back end, generally speaking, they like rules and they like people following rules and salespeople are button pushers and boundary pushers. You should be upset once a week that you can't take someone off. That's how we know our recruitment's right, like really good. So if you want to be great, which means better than average, then you just need to, number one, know more of the things you're supposed to do. And then number two, do more of those things. So you're a sales guy, right? I remember, I've done a little bit of research, by the way, before you got here and I saw an interview, I watched a couple of your interviews uh, and it's a pretty interesting start, man. Like MMA fighter, right? Yeah. Um, stripper. Yeah. Um, speaker, author, founder. Dude. That's a bit strange, you know that, right? <laughs> so, 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 where did it start? Like, where did it all start for you? Uh, I'm, well, the, I mean, the, and I, I think the big one for me is it was a TV commercial. Oddly yeah. enough, like it was. I remember I was 16 years old. I was in the United States at the time. Yeah. Um, because I, I grew up in Bermuda. That's where the yeah. accents a bit, yeah. a bit weird. Yeah. Um, but we, uh, my dad, who was actually quite successful in business, lost everything, li like literally everything, and we couldn't afford to live in Bermuda anymore. What did he do? Uh, he, he had. A, he launched a. He started out doing like home alarms. And then yep. launched a company, sold that to Chubb for a couple mil, yep. and put everything into launching a business that did like launch satellites into space. Just oh, so, right. so I, I was that, always yeah. used to. I was used to having uh, a big dreamer around me, which I kind of you know I've got to give a lot of credit there. Yep. But lost everything to the point that we when we moved to America because we couldn't live in Bermuda anymore. A, he couldn't uh, he couldn't get a permit to work, and so we went from literally living in mansions to being on government benefits within eight months. And so, uh, so I was in America at the time and, and he's obviously since, you know, built himself back up, which is, mm. you know, cool to see happen as well and sort of teaches you a lot. But it was a, a Navy, a US Navy recruitment commercial. And it was just this like plane flying over this, the water mm. in like this gloomy, dark morning. You and can it, pull that off. You look like a Navy. Uh, a <laughs> Navy, Navy yeah, <laughs> maybe. Um, and uh, I think that's all the fighting. You just get the, the bubble gum yeah, ears. It makes you look yeah, a little yeah, tougher than yeah, you are. But um but and it, and it was just this bass lines of boom, 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 boom. And it was just yeah. this big, you know, yeah. overwhelming voice. And it goes, yeah. if someone wrote a book about your life, boom, 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 yeah. would anybody read it? Yeah. And then all of a sudden these like Navy SEALs start piling out of this plane, yeah, diving right. into and this big montage. Yeah. And for some reason, I don't know what it was, but it just hit me so hard of like, mm. I got one of these things. I got one life. Mm. And at the end of it, I want people to be able to tell that story. And so, uh, you know, it was funny, you, you said the word interesting, right? Mm. When you talk about the background and, mm. and I've been putting a lot of thought into that, especially as we're, as the business is growing and as mm. the book selling and the, my, I guess my personal brand's growing mm. is, you know, the feedback that I get when I do podcasts is as, at the start and at the end, people go, wow, you're, you're a really interesting guy. Mm. And, and, and I'm very appreciative to say that, but I'm also the kind of person I like to peek under the lid and go, well, why? Mm. And, well, I thought about what makes someone interesting, and it's number one, it's what you've done. Have you done cool stuff, which is kind of what you what you've just alluded That's what to. I'm talking about, yeah. Number two, do you know cool things, which especially yeah. things that help solve people's problems? Mm. And three, are you going somewhere interesting? And if you've got one of those three, that's interesting. And if you've got all three of those three, that's very interesting. Mm. And I think that, you know, where I'm at now, a lot of the, the background was me just, you, have you seen the movie Yes Man with Jim Carrey? I have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where yeah. It, just, it just doesn't say no to things. Yeah. I just did that. I was like, anytime someone offered me something, I just, you know, even if it scared me, if I couldn't think of, unless I was, unless I'm sacrificing that for something more important, mm. if I'm just saying no, because I'm scared, I just mm. will override that and go do it. And I think that's where that wide array of activities and then ones that I turned into careers mm. came from was just me wanting to do cool things and not saying no to so opportunities. You, so, so you mentioned your father, right? Did, did you guys move here uh, after that situation? So I was born here. So we were, oh, were so dad's here. Aussie. Dad, he was born in, in Mount Isa. Um, oh, really? Yeah, he's in the country, okay. but, but spent a bit of time in, yeah, the, yeah. in the GC. Yeah. And, um, cool. and so that was sort of the, the, oh, he wanted to move back, but not with his tail between his legs. Yeah. So, cause we could have just gone back to Australia, mm. but he was, you know, he was the successful guy here. He was getting into politics. Mm. He was doing that kind of stuff. Mm. And I think there was just a bit of pride of like, I'm not going when I'm going to come back and people can call me a failure. Mm. I'll go back when I've dusted myself off and I'm doing well again. Mm. And so, but it was cool because uh, Australia doesn't have wrestling and that ended up being my, like my sport that I like fell in love with. Mm. 
And had I not learned wrestling, I wouldn't have got into MMA, mm. wouldn't have become a champion in that. And then, mm. you know, you look at the butterfly effect of mm. where life would have gone there. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You, uh, you sound quite tight with your, with your father. He's the man. He was, he was actually, yeah. I, I got married last month. Yeah. Uh, he was the best man was at my it? wedding. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, cool. gave a killer uh, speech too. Did he? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. Um, so he he's obviously created a bit of motivation for you, right? Yeah. Like that, he created some success, lost it, built it back. Was that part of the motivation for you to be an entrepreneur, a founder? Is I that- think I think uh, well, the, the, I think the motivation for me to be an entrepreneur yeah. is a mix of two things. Number one, I've, I've just been a big dreamer, and I think I inherited that from him, and I saw that from him. Because if you see it, you get, you're going to believe it, right? I so, always say kids learn from observation a lot yeah. of the time, right? Just watching. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think, I, yeah, you're right. I observed that. But also, like, I'm ADD as hell, right? And, and I don't know if, you know, I'm sure a lot of your listeners would probably fit into that category. Yeah. And I'm, like, I'm, I'm unemployable because I'm, I'm confident and I, it's very difficult for me to do things I'm not passionate about. And if something's not your idea or your business, or at least if, if you don't find a business you can attach to that you really care about, it's very hard to just be a, a worker bee. And so f- I, I just, I never, anytime I was employed by somebody or working for someone else's company, I just was, I was, I would disagree with them. I wouldn't, I'd want to do it my way. I'd get mm. bored. And I think the cool thing about being a business owner, as you know, mm. is you don't get bored because there's always a new challenge that you yeah. can just take on any moment. Did you did you always know that though about yourself, or did you have to learn that over a period of years working those jobs? Right. I, I did yeah. you just like man, oh, I can't do this. Definitely so. the latter, right? Definitely the latter, and, and yeah. it, I didn't actually get diagnosed with ADD till I was like 27. Yeah, right. Um, but it was because I just always thought that I. You know, that was just who I was. I felt like there was something wrong with me because yeah. no matter how hard I'd try, I just wouldn't be able to, even though I was good at things I had cared about and applied mm. myself to, mm. that school system model just never mm. never clicked with me. And I, every, you know, even when I went to university, which is the mm. biggest waste of money in my life, mm. I got a, I went to, I got, I got a business degree for three years, $80,000. I now own three businesses. I've never used that piece of paper once, right? So I hear that a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah and, that's, and I think that's a lot of what drives me in my, uh, especially with the sales businesses, is mm. I know I learned more in three months of door knocking mm. than I did in a four year $80,000 business degree. Mm. And, and I, that's like unilateral, like every mm. single one of my staff will get their life changed in two months time. Mm. And they'll learn more than any degree. Mm. And for me, why, why does sales, especially face to face sales, like doors or shopping centers, why does that have to be a best, set, best kept secret? Why don't mm. people know about that? And, and what drives me every day, like one of the biggest things that gets me out of bed, I wake up a little bit pissed every day. I wake up, I'm like, people, uh, people still don't know how good door-to-door sales is or, or shopping center sales is, mm. and I'm going to show them. Mm. Yeah. It's funny, right? Like sales, uh, it's critical, right? It's the, it's the lifeblood to the business, right? Mm. It generates the revenue uh, and it employs everybody. A lot of companies still push sales into the back room, man. I, I tell you, or they, they get an anti-sales culture. And that's yep. that's the that's like a kiss of death. For why is that though? Why why do people not like sales, right? Because they're everything that they that that because salespeople are everything that those people aren't, and the salespeople generally make more money for mm. what seems like less work. Mm. Because when they're in the office, especially if it's B two B, that you know the accounts team who's who's loaded with fifteen hard things that they've got to do that day, and then the salesperson comes in and says, "Hey, can you do this extra thing for me now, please?" Mm. And you know it's frustrating. And then they see the paychecks. Yeah. The yep. sales guys are making triple the money because they get commissions. Yeah. And because they've never you're sort done of saying s- they're sort of a little bit resentful. There's, right? there's, I think it's resentment, right. but also they're not proper mm. and they don't respect rules. Yeah. Right. People, people on the back end, mm. generally speaking, they like mm. rules and they like people following rules. And mm. salespeople are button pushers and boundary pushers. Mm. So I think there's a psychographical problem, but I also I think there's resentment because they don't know how hard sales is in terms of you know how how you you know how much pain you go through as a seller how, when you have to dig yourself out of a rut mm. when you're when you're trying everything and it's not working when you know all of that they don't yeah. see the difficulty or the, and how much rejection you deal with yeah. my best back-end staff so, so our app our operations team yeah. our three best operations staff yeah. came from the field i'm selling yeah. Yeah. and there's that wasn't by accident they now they understand sales wasn't for them and mm. so there's no resentment and no anti-sales culture because they get that it's hard it's funny, we just had a conversation this morning, right, about um, a guy's wife who's an engineer, his wife is a doctor, and I said to him, you know, people would perceive you as having your life set, right? And then, we, then the conversation moved, and I said, I'll tell you what, though, as a sales guy, I could earn more money than both of you, because yeah. you can, 
as long as it's uncapped, you know, I would be in control of my income. I, I so. remember my, so my, my little brother works in, uh, works in finance, right? Yep. And I, he, at the time, he's actually gone and started his own consulting firm now, which is mm. cool. But mm. at the time he was making, you know, like a hundred thousand dollars salary mm. working in a, you know, financial modeling company. Yep. And I, and he's not a big bragging guy. He's, he's a little bit more, you know, less extroverted, less look at me. Mm. And I remember I, I'd worked really, really hard. It was one of my goals forever. And I'm not super materialistic, mm. but I just set it for a long time as a goal to get a Rolex, right? Yeah. But I don't, to buy my first Rolex. Yeah. And I, I got Is that it. it. Yeah, that's the one. I've got two now, but that's another yeah. story. Yeah. Um, okay. I actually, because this one I had to put in for a service. Yeah. And, uh, and then because of COVID, there was a big yeah. backlog. So it yeah. was five months I didn't have one. Yeah. And I tried putting one of my old watches on Targ for about two weeks. And I was like, that's not me anymore. Mm. Like my identity, I'm mm. a Rolex guy now. Yeah, so yeah, I had to buy another yeah, one like to yeah. keep me satisfied. But I, I remember he <laughs> saw it. And he, and he, like, there was no pride in it. Like, he wasn't like happy for me. And I remember he actually said like, oh, it's a waste of money. Right. Mm. And, and for me, who had worked so hard as with that as a goal mm. to be able to do that mm. was, you know, it, it, it kind of hurt a bit, but I went and talked to my mate, Tommy, who owns a law firm mm. and another business owner. Mm. And I was like, I, I don't get it. And he goes, but like, Booty, you don't, you, what you don't understand, right. Is him for him. That's not money. That's time. He's on a wage. If you want more money, what do you do? And I go, mm. I work harder. Mm. He goes, yes, no matter how hard he works, no matter what he does, yeah, that's, that's right. like six months of his life he can never get back. Yeah, yeah. Well, well they just have a completely different mindset. They see yeah. economics a different way, right? Yeah. That's all. So I'm going to wind back a little bit. So you're, um, you've done a little bit of uni. You've worked a few jobs. You're going like, dude, this is not for me, right? Yeah. And you go, I'm going to start my own company. You got to that point. Was that direct sales? Was that the first business you had? It was actually because I, I so I'd I'd done a bit of work. I I ended up um, taking like a year off of just doing nothing. Mm. I was I think I was about twenty five or twenty six at the time, mm. and had enough money saved that I was like, mm. you know what, I'm just going to do nothing. And that's kind of when I started writing mm. and found that I had actually had I enjoyed and had a bit of a gift mm. for writing. The leadership and sales book. That was so. so that, that's it's funny. So leadership and sales came from COVID. Right. Because oh, okay. Got again, it, yeah. like I said, super ADD. I can't do yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. COVID hit and yeah. we had eleven weeks that I had to shut the businesses down for, mm. I was like, Well, I can't do nothing. And so that was that I just ended up writing a book in, mm. you know, in that exact amount of time mm. and then took another month to edit it and then it was mm. off to the races. So it only mm. took me four months or three and a half months to mm. start and print a book. Awesome. Um, and that's now become a, a bestseller, which is kind of cool as well. Yeah. Um, but the the first one I wrote was fiction. Um, and yeah. was just because I'm, I'm a little nerdy. Like everyone's got yeah. their own quirks, right? Yeah. And don't let stripper cage fry to fool you. I can still out, yeah. I can out <laughs> yeah, Marvel right. trivia you anytime. You yeah, know, like, right. okay. I can, yeah, I, cool. you know, I've read, I think I've read Lord of the Rings like three times. Like Maybe. I'm, you know, a nerd yeah, as never well. Never heard of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, um, but, but so the, the first ones I wrote were fiction, no, but right. in hindsight, because what, one of the problems with nonfiction is sometimes mm. it can be very dry and mm. it's not, the, you just does, it's not gripping writing. Mm. Whereas to learn how to write fiction well, you've really got to learn how to describe a scene. You can't just say, you know, it was midday. Mm. You've got to say, look, the, shun, the sun bounced back shadowless from the sharp stones or something mm. like that. Like you've got to give it's them, the art of storytelling, right? Yeah. And you learn how yeah. to write and you get really good with metaphors and you get yep. really good at making people understand or, mm. or picture things. Mm. And because I wrote fiction first, when I, even though I haven't bothered publishing those yet, but yeah. when I then wrote the nonfiction book, I mm. found that the writing was much more just sexy, like, if that makes sense. Mm. Like it's, it's not just a, a, like reading a history book. Like mm. you can really, mm. you, the stories that you tell in it make it a more readable book. So, mm. so that was kind of cool. And then I ran out of money. And then I thought to myself, how can I make a lot of money very quickly? Yep. And that was in face-to-face -face sales. So, so you went and worked for someone else first to get a feel for it? I did it. I did about eight months of it, right? So I did, I got yep. my degree. I'd broken my hand fighting. So mm. I couldn't, I couldn't fight. Um, and so, and they, they take forever to heal hands. It's about six yeah. months before you actually yeah. can do anything relevant. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and just happened to walk into a guy that said, yeah. Hey, do you want to, like, we just bumped into this guy in the casino yeah. and he goes, Hey, are you in sales? And I go, no. And he goes, you should be, you look like you'd be good at it. I go, thank you. Yeah. You look like you'd be good yeah. at it. And he goes, do you what? want to, do you want to get into sales? Are, are you being sarcastic? Like, <laughs> yeah. what? No, I, I don't know. Yeah. It was just one of those yeah. weird interactions. And he just goes, do you want to do sales? I was like, yeah. Yeah. And then I started on Monday and it ended up there's, being... There's such low barriers to entry for sales, right? But it's also not something like, you ever... You're never a kid going, I'm going to be in sales, yeah, you know, unless yeah, your parents yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. So, But it is. It's, you can, anyone can start it. Anyone can start it. Yeah. 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 Whether you can be successful is a different story. Okay. Yeah. Staying in the games, you know, that, that requires okay. a bit so, more. So he saw something in you. Um... Gave you a job. You obviously, you must have been good at it. I well, yeah, I was very fortunate that yeah. I had I had good mentorship and yeah. I, it got me at the right time in life where yeah. 
I, I wanted to sink my yeah. teeth into something yeah. and ended up uh, breaking a lot of the company records. Yeah, great. But I did it for about eight months. Yeah. And this is where I really screwed up is because I got the degree and because obviously my, you know, my parents, I didn't want to let them down and I wanted them to, you know, they, they really wanted me to get this. Uh, my mom in particular wanted me to get a good, you know, yeah. real job. Yeah. And a lot of times sales, especially, <laughs> yeah, especially face to face sales. It doesn't. And it's a funny one. Like even, even three years into owning the business, I'd just become a millionaire and she was still sending me seek ads for like BDM roles, yeah, like right. 80K a year BDM roles. Crazy. Moms, moms sometimes just don't get it. Well, they just want to protect you. Right. And they're very traditional. You know? Yeah. She's just, she's just telling you what she learned from her mom. Right. Yeah. That's, that's just they, happens, they so. do. Yeah, they do their best. And, and, yeah. but, but it was really funny. I, 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 you know, shortly after that, I bought her a BMW and then she hadn't said anything about the job yeah, since. She, so. she <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Um, but yeah, so I did that for about eight months and mm. I loved it. I learned, I, I learned more than I'd ever learned. I'd mm. made more money than I'd ever made. I'd had, mm. I was the first job I ever enjoyed, mm. but because of those external pressures, I went, I, I really felt like I should go get a real mm. job. And that's mm. what I did. I ended up leaving that, quitting mm. it and then going and working in advertising and then bouncing around other jobs and just hated them all. Mm. And looking back, I just realized I wasted three years of my life well, when I could have, okay. Well, wasted is a strong word, but time. Well, that it's, I a, it's a learning. This it's, it's a learning curve, right? Uh, you, yeah. I think you probably you had to do that three years to really figure it out. Yeah. And be committed to it, right? So you, you did that. You came back to sales, started your own company. Bingo. And in, in the same sort of field. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was, I, I did other things, and yeah, it was this one. Um, you know, the, the low ticket face to face, mm. because a lot of people, you know, everyone praises high ticket all the time, like it's like mm. the be all end all of selling. Mm. Mm. And if you just want to sell, and that's the only thing you want to do, mm. sure. Right, but if you want to build a team and you want to be able to get to a managerial position where you don't have to sell one mm. day, mm. low ticket's the way to go because mm. it, you can you can train people. It takes six months to get all the product knowledge to be really good at B two B sales. Mm. Whereas, I mean, that's you know, it might be hyperbole, and obviously mm. it changes per industry. Yeah, yeah. But I can get someone good in two and a half weeks yep. in low ticket because yep. the pitch is shorter, yep. and you don't and you're not having to be so accountable to the knowledge of your product. There's, there's something I always think about, like people who are good at sales, can they run a business, right? Or people who are good at sales normally get promoted inside a company to be a manager. Just because they're good at sales, it doesn't make them a good leader. Yeah. So did, when you started your own company, did you get hit? Did you go, wow, I thought this is not what I thought it was going to be? I, to I definitely got floored with, uh, it, look, the, the upside is by that time I developed accountability. Yep. Because most good salespeople don't aren't great with accountability to start mm. with, and yeah. it's, that's probably one of the pivotal lessons to go from selling to leading is to be able to blame yourself. Because if you've got a, let's say I've got a rep that's just lazy, right? Mm. That is, and and they're not not necessarily as a person, but they're just not doing the KPIs. They're yeah. not making enough they're calls, not or they're numbers, not, not knocking enough doors. Yeah. Yeah. My first instinct is to go, well, that's I've got a lazy rep. Let me get another rep, and and that doesn't work that way because it's like okay, I'll put it back on them and go, all right. Have you had a goal setting session with them? Have you actually mm. discussed what they want and mm. tethered or aligned what we can do with what they want? Mm. And then have you aligned the work ethic with their goals? Mm. Because if I say, if they say, yeah, I actually really want to do this and I want to make a hundred grand a year and I want to do this and that, it's like, cool, you know, you're going to need to do 25 pitches a day then, right? Instead of 15, mm. they go, mm. oh, okay. Now you mm. can drive them. Whereas, so you were trying to contextualize it for them and connect it to what they want, right? Exactly. And, and without accountability, mm. if you don't say, well, d have I done a goal setting session with them? It's a lot easier to just point and say, I've got a lazy rep, give me another one. Mm. And if you're relying on circumstance to get you where you want to go as opposed to your skill, mm. let me know how that goes. Mm. It's difficult, right? I think as a, as a sales guy and a very good one, you know, obviously I can, I can tell you've got skills, right? You can communicate very well, by the way. Shucks. Hey, hey. <laughs> But so, you know, now you have to find people around you who have those skills as well, right? So mm -hmm. there's obviously a recruitment process and all this sort of stuff you have to go through. I guess my, my, my host question was, did you get hit by everything else that, when, that was not connected to sales like P&Ls, economics, budgeting, managing wages? Uh, managing commission schedules, all that stuff. Like, talk to me about that. So, the, to, to I answer bet that, you did, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. The, the, it's funny because yeah. I'm very, I'm grateful for it too. Because number yeah. one, it learn, I, I learned so much from it. But two, it's a cautionary tale because yeah. it's, for, you know, it's very, you know, people go, oh, well, I can start my own business one day, and it's like. I, and I'd love that for people. I like it when people start their own businesses. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, you know, I try not to, and, and we've got an entrepreneurship structure now as well that people mm. can get to an equity level within the business without mm. having to leave. Mm. But, you know, I, I went $200,000 into debt my first two years in. So mm. two years in, I owed my supplier $200,000 plus whatever I owed in tax. And, and mm. I just had no idea how the money worked. And it's it, common, right? It's, it's hard, so man. common, man. Like, it's, 
like sales guys know how to make money, they just don't know how to manage it. No, and, and you've got to learn those lessons the hard yep. way sometimes yep. um, or have a mentor that mm. can get you there. And the, mm. the tricky bit with, with my journey is nobody taught me how to run a business. Nobody was my, there was no one holding my hand, mentoring me to give mm. me the skills as I needed them. Mm. It all, and if that's not the case, yep. um, you know, you can go out and find it in books and things like that, but more often than not, you're going to learn from your screw ups mm. and the things that hit that, that sideline you or that, that floor you or T-bone you. And you're like, mm. oh, this sucks, mm. but let me know how to stop that so it doesn't happen again. Mm. So you got a mentor, they helped you work through that? Well, I didn't. That's the tricky part. So, oh, you didn't? Oh, yeah. Okay. And, so you and just figured it out? I just had to figure it all out the hard way, which was yeah. obviously costly and difficult, yeah, yeah. but yeah. got there in the end. And I'm very fortunate that the way that my brain works is I really, I, I can extrapolate lessons mm. very well. I can mm. look at something that's working and go, mm. let me figure out the framework of the three things that are making that work mm. and let me figure out three ways to do three each of mm. those three things. Mm. So so I was fortunate enough to be, I guess, blessed with that skill set. But it's a good skill set, man. It's it's very rare these days, I think. That's what I think. Um say so I wanna so training sales guys, man. Yeah. Very difficult. Do you have a, have you created your own little framework? You know, like I'm, oh, I'm assuming it's meticulous, you man. Yeah. It's art. So, because again, the, the, and and I think you'll like this because even just speaking to you now, yeah. I, you you strike me as somebody who understands it's not about addition; it's about multiplication. Yeah. It's not about finding the right person. Yeah. It's about finding a good person and bringing them to great. Yeah. And and you can't if if you want to scale. In order to scale, you need reliable systems. If you're relying mm. on talent to scale your business, mm. you're going to be at the mercy of the the ability your people have. Mm. And so. What I realize that that if we're going to scale, because all I want to do is scale and grow and, and have more feet on the ground doing what we do, helping further our mission, mm. Mm. then we need to be able to develop leaders. And it kind of goes back to what you said about, mm. you know, you people put people in a sell, you know, great sellers into a leadership role and then they don't do well. Mm. We really, we put a lot into our leadership training and our sales training. Mm. But the more that we can take out of their hands, the more reliably we can get people up to speed. So we have a uh, an online like video sales training platform mm. that every day there's a video that they're meant to watch that teaches them a new skill each day. Mm. The added benefit of that is... Is that you doing that video program? Uh, myself and another guy, Patrick, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Swiss, a Swiss guy that's um, yep. he's really, really switched on. So yep. we've, we've got that. Um, and we've actually got, we, we have somebody that actually calls the reps each morning or voice messages them each morning to say, how'd you go? Did you watch the video? You, what skill are you learning today? Great. Mm -hmm. And then messages that reps leader, their, their mentor to go, Hey, just to double check, they're learning mm -hmm. this skill today. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, they'll ref, they'll, they'll check in and reflect with that new rep mm -hmm. on if they've developed that skill and how they went. Cause that's mm -hmm. really good for synaptic development mm -hmm. helps build the habit faster. So just quickly, I'm going to break this down a little bit. So people yeah. watching know how to do this. Cause I think. Companies and young entrepreneurs struggle with building a sales team, man, like big time. Yeah. So, are they how many videos, and is it like introduction, discovery, agenda setting, closing? Like, what, what sort of? It's well. So we've done it in order, and this is, yep. ours is meticulous. Ours is yep. you know ours is very very thorough. Yeah. But it's we basically we have two platforms. So the yep. first one is the foundations platform. Yeah. Because there's there's two mistakes that companies will generally make when it comes to training mm. sales staff. Number one is. They'll just hire someone, put them with someone good, and then say, just figure out what they're doing, oh, man, which is the worst never thing. Works. Yeah, it's the worst <laughs> thing. And then the other one is they'll overload them with things yep. and say, here's here's three months worth of content. Mm. You know, learn it at your own pace. Here, mm. You know, try and then they'll just they, mm. then they'll just overcomplicate their pitch. Mm. And so the secret for us is we incrementally teach it so mm. that they it's like okay, first thing you need to learn is pitch basics, which is, we call it the four Fs, mm -hmm. which is frame, frame, framework, feeling, flow, and facts. Mm -hmm. So number one is pitch structure, mm -hmm. intro, problem, solution, close, mm -hmm. you know, rebuttals, mm -hmm. consolidation. Mm -hmm. uh, feelings, which yep. is how you actually convey emotion effectively, mm -hmm. which is your emphasis on your buzzwords, yep. you know, yep. your tonality, your, your facial expressions, your body yep. language, which really is just your hands. Oh, it's all face to face, right? Yeah, yep. predominantly, yep. right? Yep. Um, and then, uh, and then it's the the flow is how to control the conversation, yep. asking questions, letting them answer, rewarding yep. their answer. Yep. So you're building that compliance, yep. keeping in control of the conversation. Yep. And then the facts is how you elaborate to dig into each fact. Mm. That that's our basic. So that's day one, and they'll mm. learn that in the training day. They'll learn that day one. Then they're going to learn how to introduce themselves effectively, yep. so that they we, they they win. Uh, they they don't they they beat the customer when the customer is trying to impose a salesman frame. You know, when, when you introduce yourself to a customer, mm -hmm. they're trying to impose this idea that you're selling them something mm -hmm. so that their loss is going to be your gain. Mm -hmm. And you've got to beat that by being funny and indifferent. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And so we teach them that. Mm. And then on day three, we'll teach them how to objection handle. Just mm. a basic one size yep. fit all one. Yep. The advanced ones are later on in their journey. Yep. So that's probably the basics. The most yep. important things is how to, how to generate impulse and emotion, mm. how to introduce yourself and how to mm. handle an objection. Mm. If you can do those by the end of week one, mm -hmm. that's solid. Mm -hmm. And then we'll build the skills on top of that, assuming mm. that we're happy with how well they're doing the basics. So you sort of rate them in that first week, right? I'm assuming, yeah. you know, are they picking up the, the learning? I'm assuming you test them on it somehow, yep. like role yep. playing we've and got, all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, and we've actually got written exams for each promotion. And Shit, really? I'm, I'm, wow. Cause That's just, awesome, dude, because not many people do that. Well, it's, we we it's don't even scale. do that. We don't do that. Yeah, right? I'll give you mine if you want. <laughs> no, like, uh, <laughs> we, 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 we don't do that. And we should do that, right? Because your systems win, right? Yeah. Like, as you said, talent is not scalable because yeah. um, they could just leave. 100%. All right. Um, but it's also, it's no, uh, the, for me, the, uh, my, I call it the greatness equation. Mm. In order to be really good at anything, you only actually have to do two things. Mm. And people really overcomplicate it. There's two mm. things. If you want to be great, which means better than average, mm. then you just need to, number one, know more of the things you're supposed to do. Mm. And then number two, do more of those things. Mm. So then, then what the average person does. Mm. And so if, you're, if they know the skill, a lot of the times when people don't do skills effectively, it's because they don't know the skills effectively. Mm. So number one, it's the education habits. Mm. And number two, it's the discipline to actually do it. And so if, if knowledge and education is a core component, we're going to make sure we make sure they know that, and we do that yep. all the way up to the leadership levels as well. Yep. How do you teach? We need. We actually have a written exam of like, okay, how do you teach a concept, which we call why, what, how, tell, show, watch, mm. which is you know there's there's individual mm. skills on how to lead as well. Yeah, yeah. super interesting. On. Yeah. So, um, you're in your business, you're chipping away, you're making money, right? You're still doing the same business that you started that we just discussed, right? Mm. Like you're still in that business yeah. and you're scaling that business. Yeah. By the way, you picked a really hard sector, man. Like I think. That face-to-face -face sector is so, so difficult. Um, do you think about, well, man, maybe I'm on the wrong vehicle or is this like, man, this is my game? Every day. Yep. I, every day I question it and, and that's, but, but in, a, in a good way, yep. right? Where, because, and I know it sounds funny, I love what I do and, mm. and this is the thing and this is why purpose is so relevant mm. because I know the reason that people develop so much and learn so much is mm. because it's hard. Mm. But the upside is, is because like, again, it's face-to-face -face sales, door knocking in particular, mm. it's one of the hardest industries to recruit in, one of the mm. hardest industries to retain talent mm. in. Mm. It's one of the hardest things to get consistent results in. Mm. And you, d you deal with more problems than your average business owner. Mm. And now when I do speaking and coaching, mm. you know, I like the stuff the, the information that I've got firsthand it's, you know, people, you know, I'll, I'll have a, a client say, uh, you know, hey, one of my one of my top sellers is thinking about quitting. What do yep. I do? And I'm like, yep. that's a Tuesday for me. Like, it, just do this. Yeah. So, so it's taught me a lot, but also I would, I don't think I'd ever truly abandon it mm. because it, because the fact that it's difficult yep. is the fact, is why people grow so much. If mm. it was easy, nobody would be growing. Mm. And so I, I love what I do and that, that helps me push through mm. but it, it's it, you know I, I there are other avenues that we are exploring as well yeah but i but i think because i love the industry so much i, I don't yeah. think i'd ever truly abandon it talk to me about recruitment man look a very difficult space for people trying to grow a sales team right yeah getting it right's a problem finding the right people even in the market is a problem mm -hmm. retention's a problem in the space as well people come and go really quickly mm -hmm. and then people come in with no skills, so you have to have a training program like you have to teach them. So how do you overcome that? How are you managing recruitment for your sales team? Well, this is what's, uh, when you look at the face-to-face the, the, the -face industry as a yep. whole, what COVID really steamrolled the industry, like halved the amount of people and business owners in the industry. And the reason is most of their recruitment, they, they used to work on full commission only, mm -hmm. and now we pay bases, which is, you know, that's an extra... Do you have to risk. do that or you've decided to do that? Uh, a bit of both. Yeah. A bit of both. Bit of both. Right. Yeah. Um, but the, the the whole model then, and and there was a lot of backpackers. It was very backpacker heavy because you get these overqualified, you know, yeah. Europeans and Americans mm. that would normally be in something a little bit more glitzy mm. that all of a sudden they, you know, but they're only here for a short term. So those big mm. companies don't want them. They may as well do something like mm. door knocking, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the problem is when COVID hit and the industry then had some regulations that stopped full commission or made it harder for sham contracting. Mm. Those, those companies, now that there was no more backpackers coming through mm. and they couldn't just do the throw it at the wall and see what sticks model because mm. they didn't have those training development plans we talked about, mm. they're nowhere to be seen. And mm. the companies that survived were the ones that knew how to recruit Aussies, which are hard, mm. especially because mm. Aussies are entitled. Like I love Australians, but they're, oh, 100%. they're around work. 100%. They're, yeah. they're, uh, 
Yeah, yeah there, was a, there was a funny stand-up comedian, a Latin American stand-up comedian who yeah. lives in Australia. Yeah. And he goes, I'm gonna, I got a joke for you guys. Uh, I'm going to do some Australian math. So yeah. I'm going to do some Australian math. Yeah. So uh, I, I want you to know, so I've got, uh, I've got eight days of annual leave left. I've got another seven days of sick leave. I've got yeah. two public holidays between now and Christmas. Yeah. When should I resign so that I get the exact amount so that I can get all of those uh, yeah. leaves? Yeah. If you know the answer to that question, you're Australian. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I'm yeah. an immigrant. <laughs> yeah, 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 we yeah. don't quit our jobs. We're grateful. Yeah, 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 and, right. and so... Yeah. Again, learning how to play on hard, I think that's mm. been really, really helpful for us. Mm. Uh, but as far as recruitment, the, so number one, the, the throw it at the wall and see what sticks model doesn't work. You've got to be yep. pickier on the way in. Mm. You've actually got to be able to clearly ascertain what are the traits we want in someone. Because if mm. you miss, right, the, the, I think there was some statistic that uh, that hiring the wrong person, it can cost you three months of that person's wage mm. just in terms of bad performance, uh, finding yeah. a new one, Plus, new person, right. retraining someone else. Plus. It can yep. be really detrimental. Can I just hover there for a second? So do you have like a, do you have a recruitment manual? Do you have a checklist? Do you do all of that? Yeah. We, ours is very, okay. yeah. So we, yeah. So we and it's, and it's two factored. Yep. So, so even if I like somebody mm -hmm. and we get them through the second mm -hmm. round interview, the first mm -hmm. one, obviously we just, you mm -hmm. know, we want to meet them and get the vibe. Mm -hmm. Second one, we actually get them with the team and see how they respond in the, in the mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. And even if you like them, you've got to call either myself or Zach who runs our recruitment. Mm -hmm. um, also in the music sector as well. He's a, mm -hmm. he's a great guy. Um, mm -hmm. But, and there's, we call it the red flag checklist. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, there's a series of red flags mm. or and things so there's uh they have to there's seven traits we want out of them yeah are they competitive are they ambitious are they yeah. confident or that you yeah. know there's things and yeah. they have to do, they have to clearly display six of the seven yeah. and not have any of the red flags wow, and and, That's and super interesting. even if you because really, you get attached to them right because yeah, you're yeah, like you i can make this guy or this it's girl funny right and, and, and when you when you have an interview when i have an interview with a management team as soon as they leave everyone talks about their good qualities I always say to them, yeah, but what don't you like about them, right? Yeah. Like, you, and you, you get rose-colored glasses, right? Oh, because you're like, this is the one. This is the guy. And, and then, and then, <laughs> but then let's say I'm talking to, uh, but then I'll do the red flag checklist and I'll call yep. Zach. And I, yep. I mean, I really like this guy's good. Okay. Yep. And then all of a sudden you realize that this person's, you know, lives 90 minutes from the office and is going to, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, not going to work yeah, late. Yeah. And this and that, yep. you're like, oh yep. no. And and this yep. is what oh, we really... did a Google search. He just killed three people uh, three years ago. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? hundred so, percent. You should do that research, by the way. And, uh, and, and this is where we know when this is how because our recruitment's really gotten good in the last year in particular we've just mm. been so put so much effort into it and our messaging and how we're mm. getting them on board and all that mm. um but you should be upset once a week that you can't take someone on that's how we know our recruitment's right like really good mm. is is if we're not upset that about people that we wish we could hire but we can't mm. then we're be, we're not being picky enough mm. so we call it wows only that, and the whole idea is, would you be scared to lose this person? And yeah. that's the last question on the checklist is, yeah. are they a wow? Yeah. It, this is, you know, as we yeah. let checklist I was telling you about, yeah. is if we're not scared to lose them, we don't hire them. Mm. It's, a, it's an interesting... It's funny, one. right? System, system, systems, yeah. math, 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 man. Like recruitment, I think, is mathematics. You've got to run them through the algorithm. It's also law of averages, right? Like if you want to win yeah. a raffle, you buy more tickets. And companies yeah, yeah. will post one ad yeah. one week, take the best rep out of that. It's like, what are you doing? So I was just about to ask you, how many how many people you re you're constantly recruiting, obviously, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So you've got ads on Seek and you've probably got a whole bunch of other ways. Yeah. Um, so what are those other ways? Like how do you, um, so referrals probably, yeah. Seek, and a whole bunch of other platforms. What else do you do? Yeah, so, so look, Seek's, Seek's a good one because, but again, the tricky bit with, and this is a marketing, marketing 101, yeah. where a lot of people screw up with recruitment is they mm. don't understand recruitment is a marketing endeavor and mm. someone choosing to work with you is a transaction. They're buying whatever they think with their time, mm. not with their mm. money, what they think the job can give mm. them. And so when you look at recruitment, it's not HR. Pe companies that have HR as its own division and exclusively let their HR division run their recruitment, mm. good luck because mm. recruitment's a marketing endeavor, mm. right? And when you think about marketing, if you, there's a um, need awareness triangle, right? Where, yeah. Or pyramid, where... Yeah. Uh, you know, 3% of people are ready to buy right now. Well, you found your mirror, so let's say triangle. <laughs> For sure, right? Um, so 3% three, 3 of people are ready to buy right now, mm. right? 17% of people are in the information gathering stage. 20% mm. of people are need aware but not doing anything about it. Mm. And 60% of people are need unaware, right? Now, the problem is if, if I'm advertising on Seek, 
I'm only hitting that top 20%, the 3% of people that are ready to buy right now mm. and the 17% of people that are looking around but not really sure, mm. right? And there's still 80% of the market out there that isn't being touched. Mm. And, and that's where like the PRs, like the personal recruits come in, right? Mm. Or the personal referrals, where I'll ask one of the guys, you know, let's say someone's in the company, they've done a month, they've just made their first two or $3,000 paycheck, mm. they're having a lot of fun. I'm like, mate, yeah, you enjoying yourself? Yeah, do you have any mates that you think would be good at this? Mm. And they go, actually, yeah. Well, mm. we actually offer basically the cost of what it would, would cost us to put the CCADs up and recruit mm. them. Mm. We give that to the rep instead. Mm. And, and obviously, they've got to, we've got to make sure it's the right person. We don't just give them the yeah, job right course, away. Yeah, yeah. So that helps a lot. There's obviously yeah. some marketing strategies around social media and things yeah. like that that we can yeah. use. Seek is yeah. still really good. But yeah. if someone wants a job now, Seek is only targeting that top 20%. Yeah. And so, so there's definitely a lot of other ways that we try and recruit. Mm. Um, the Seek NPRs are still the, the, the dominant two, mm. but I think social media is really going to be that, that mm. last one that, that really hits us. Mm. And I'd like to ideally get big enough that, that I can even do like ambient media and mm. billboards and things mm. like that, cinema mm. advertising even, mm. depending on what the... Cinema advertising, yeah. well, I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah. You get yeah. bang for your buck with cinema advertising because yeah. you've got a captive audience yeah, and, yeah. and it's cheap because no one else is doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Um, so you're scaling right now, right? Yeah. So have you prepared for that? I always think about you know sales because you can scale sales as long as you've got a good sales team, right? Yeah. Uh, and every entrepreneur wants to scale the business, right? Yeah. Come on. Um, so talk, talk to me about what you're putting in place now to do that. Like what, what's the infrastructure? How are you thinking about your company right now? Yeah, look, it's, it's, it is, the problem is, is if somebody's not ready, if you set them up in a location on their own, mm. because you, wanna, you, you don't just want to be building out of one city because mm. there's, there's only so, so big of a recruitment pool in that city, mm. right? Um, and especially for things like door-to-door. -door. Is that how you see it in terms of partnerships and recruitment? Well, ideally, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's people that can yeah. get to a management level. It normally takes yeah. about one to two years to get good yeah, enough okay. to do that. Okay. And not everyone's going to do that, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's about, so it really is about having the people and mm. making sure those people know all the things to do. And there's just so mm. many little one percentage you've got to get right. Mm. So you don't want to over expand. Mm. A, a lot of companies will really, they'll over leverage themselves mm. and then everything will go wrong at once. Mm. So it really, it's still about building the leaders. It's mm. about building the right managers, getting them the mm. people where they need to get to personally. Because mm. mm. as good as our systems are, yep. people are still going to, you know, what they, what a new rep sees is still gonna be 80% of what they take in, regardless of how good our training systems are or mm. our KPI management or mm. any of that. If they if they see someone else's bad habits, mm. they're gonna, I call it the 60 versus 100 rule. Mm. New, new staff will do, or any staff really, they'll do 60% of your good habits and 100% of your bad habits. Yep. Right, because the sixty percent of the good habits is just they they'll compare themselves to to you and just assume they can do less. Mm -hmm. I think it's called like the Peterson theory, theory or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But human beings, we're always going to try and do less because our brains like to conserve energy, yep. and every bad habit is really just a shortcut. Mm. It's it's just a lazy thing, and whatever you can get away with, whatever you're allowed to do, you're going to do. So so making sure that the leaders have as many of the right habits as possible. That's a big one. So I get, that's our biggest bottleneck for scaling is having the right people to scale. Because I'd love to just go, hey. Yeah, it's difficult, man. Go out. It's, it's seriously difficult, right? Especially in this current market. So let me, get, let, me, let me go here. So how do you see the current market, right? Like, I know that people speak uh, and use the term woke, right, a lot yeah. these days, right? Yeah. Which means is, you know, a lot of agents maybe or salespeople come in with lower resilience and tolerance, right? Yeah. I get that. Yeah. Uh, how do you see that and how do you combat that in your business? It's a, it's a funny one you say that, right? So Because I, I'm a big believer of, look, it's like kids grow up with eighth place trophies 100%. and everyone's bubble, bubble wrapped. Yeah. And now they're, they're just afraid to lose so they don't mm. take accountability, mm. right? So there's no, there's no accountability and you're right, there's no resilience. People aren't mm. tough because they haven't caught knocks mm. before. Mm. And how do, we, how do we keep that out of the business? Because I, I don't think it's a matter of tailoring your business to allow for people like that. I think it's just not allowing people like that in. And, yeah, and I don't, not well, in a discriminatory way. No, I, I, I think that's, a, that's the know, only way to do it. Do you it, know what right? I started doing? Well, is I've just started in our ads saying that the job's hard. Yeah. And <laughs> at the moment, in the interviews, if you just say, look, this is a hard job. Like there's yeah. not, yeah. Um, there, you know, there are easy jobs out there. You can go yeah. and do something cushy with a yeah. lot of work-life balance. Yeah. This is not a job for people who want work-life balance because yeah. comfort and growth don't happen at the same time. Yep. This is a job for people who want to grow yeah. and level up with their skills, yep. level up their ability to earn money, mm. level up within the career as mm. in terms of growing teams. Mm. And you're not going to get that without elbow grease. And yep. just by explaining clearly, 
if this this is it's for this people that you know this job is for these kinds of people if you're not one of these people this mm. is not for you mm. and and we we weed those out pretty easily that's super interesting right i just said to the sales guys this morning because i'm still involved in sales man i'm in there it's like fun. it's because i like it right yeah. i like to get away from my desk and all these corporate meetings and just have a bit of fun with the team yeah and i said to them this morning if you make it sound easy they don't want it Right, and it's the same with interviewing staff. Right, if you make it sound easy, that you know, it's just like, come on, man. Like, then they walk into the job, right, and then yeah. you hit them, and they shake and they leave. Yeah. Right. So it's a bit of a flip well, from being in the sales world to being in the recruitment 100%. world. Right. So it's funny you say that because there's a, they did a study millennials, mm-hmm. right, and and, yep. and earlier generations. Yeah. They're more likely to quit than ask for a raise. Hundred percent. It's the craziest thing. Like they just they're yeah. so afraid yeah, yeah, of being yeah. rejected yeah. that uh, that the idea of being told no is too yeah. scary. They'll yeah. quit the job with no other job statistically, yeah. Yeah. just because they want more money. It's like, yeah. what do you, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy that they think like that. But I think the majority of people are like that. Like you said, right? In an interview, I've gotten to the point where I say, "Hey, look, come in for five days, and if you're not any good, we'll just fire you on Friday." <laughs> you know? And they go, "What?" I said, "Yeah." It says, because this is going to be really difficult and we will know in five days because I've got this theory that when people are in interviews, they're really good at bullshitting, right? Yeah. They just lie, man. Yeah. Through their teeth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Their resume is not 100% accurate. They're telling you they've got skills that they don't have and then we bring them in the business and they don't have anything that they said they did. Yeah. That's like crazy, man. And then you have to get rid of them. I always think uh, we should hire slow and fire fast. That's, yeah, that's a Brian Tracy one. And you're 100% right. Yeah. And, and firing quick is a big one as well, right? Because yep. you get fear of loss by people. But, but also, and, and the, the biggest thing that I got, I actually got it from a Brian Tracy book, yep. is if you're ever wondering if you should fire someone. The kids won't know who Brian Tracy is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But if you're ever wondering if you should fire somebody, yeah. just the fact that you're asking well, you the questions, you, kind should of, you should know. But he yep. says, here's the question that you should a- ask yep. yourself. Yep. Is knowing everything I know now, yep. if they weren't currently working in the team, yep. would I hire them today? Yeah. And yeah. that's, that's helped me get rid of a lot of people. And no, more often than not, yeah. they're grateful. They're, yeah. No one kicks up a fuss. Do you, get, do you get rid of people quickly? I give them a chance. I, yeah. I, I, but it's always performance-based. Because yeah. that's one of the, the cool thing about sales and also the tricky thing yeah. is as far as you know, compliance with yeah. uh, you know, fair work. Because Australia's got a very tight fair yeah. work, right? Yeah. Uh, which is good and bad, right? Yeah. Um, but is we, it's everything's performance based. Yeah. And if somebody's not working out, let's say they're just not doing the things they're supposed to do, yeah. then we'll say, look, we, we need you to be performing. You understand that yeah. what you're doing now is not sustainable. Yeah. Uh, if you get this many sales, we need you to get this many sales by the end of the week or over these next two weeks. Yeah. If you don't hit those sales, would you agree that it's fair that you don't work with us anymore? Yeah. And as soon as they say, yes, that's fair, that's probably a good then you give them it. a chance. We call yeah. it, you'll like this, we call it a fufo. Yeah. We, not not yeah. on paper, it's, it's colloquial, yeah. so don't sue yeah. me on this one. Yeah. But, it's, <laughs> okay. but it's a sure. fufo, so it's fire up or fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Are, and, and you will 50 50, 50 percent chance we'll give them a two week criteria. And in those two weeks, they'll work harder than they ever have, yeah. build those habits, and now they'll be really good. Yeah. And some of our best uh, you know, team members yeah. have gone down that path, yeah. or they won't, and they'll realize yeah. it's not for them. So, yeah. so I don't just go, you're not good enough, get out. Yeah. I'll go. You've got a chance. Yeah. Let's see what you got. And and then because then yeah. you're not firing them, they're firing themselves. Yeah. I've got this thing of um, I get that totally, hundred percent, and I agree with that. I've got this thing about kind candor, right? Yeah. Man, just be honest. Like, be candid with people. It's been well, tough for. Uh, I get that vibe from you. You sound like a, a, a you straight know, shooter in that sense. Yeah, and, and I think it's it's been difficult for me because I'm probably too candid. Yeah. Right. Uh, and I'm really trying to figure out. <laughs> I'm try- I'm trying to be more empathetic. Right. Yeah. I'm working on that a lot. Uh, because I think it's required in this new market, right? These these younger kids need need me to be more empathetic. And it's tricky because when, as in someone in your position who's such a, you, you've got to be decisive. To be a great leader, you've got to be sure and you've got to be decisive, which yeah. means, and those are disagreeable traits. Yeah. And in order to be empathetic, you've got to be agreeable. Yeah. You've got to, you, you know, you've got to, yeah, you, 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 in order to be someone that feels what other people feel, mm. you have to agree with them. If you don't agree with them, you don't feel. Mm. And so it's actually a, a personality trait. Mm. I'm like third percentile agreeable on a big five personality test. It's good, mm. good luck. But mm. what I learned was a thing called tactical empathy, mm. which is you don't have to agree with people. Mm. You just have to understand why they feel the way they feel. Mm. Because I may not agree with your logic, mm. but I understand that because you have different values than me or you have, you've had a different mm. experience here or there mm. that you're going to feel that way. And as mm. the moment I understand mm. and, make, and, and they know that I understand, understand them then Mm. it dissolves all the anger 
mm. and, there's, and you get a neutral interaction. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, elements to it, right? Like patience is a, is a big part of that for me. I've got to learn how to be patient when people are not figuring it out, you know, and slow that sort of down for them. Um, being empathetic with them and telling them that I, I understand them and I'll, I'll let's work together. Yeah. To resolve it and get to a result, you know, yeah. doing all of that, uh, which is very difficult for me. I'm normally like a little bit like that. Yeah. Let's get the number. Let's get, you and know. I think you've got to be in, in order to be. Yeah, a you do. It's a balance, leader. though, yeah. right? I th- do you think it's a balance? Like, I, uh, of course it's a balance. Yeah. I think it's, the other, it's just making sure they, they feel understood. Yeah. And, and that's something I have to teach a lot of my, my managers and leaders mm. of like mm. a lot of the times, 90% of what the, the reps complain to you about is mm. just them trying to give themselves an excuse to not do well. Yeah. And you've got to be able to just pish, pish, posh and go, come on, get it together. Yeah. But you have to at least make their concern feel heard first mm. and then get them to understand the logic as to why it's BS. Mm. And, and it is tricky. Yeah, so let's wind back to the sales agent. I want to go back to the recruitment thing, man. I find yeah. it super interesting, right? Um, so when you recruit, what's the one or two elements you look for in a successful sales guy? Ooh. There's got to be a couple of big ones, right? Uh, I'll tell you two questions that I ask that really help me a lot yep. in the interview. Because yep. like you said, people lie through their teeth, right? 100%. And and you, so if I say, do you work hard? They're going to be like, yeah, yeah right? Yeah. But, but It's so not a great question, so, right? So you're asking yep. loaded questions. You want to ask yep. questions where I don't actually care what you say. I want to see how you say it. Mm. So one of the, the, the ones that really work for us, right? Because mm. at first, like I'll, I'll say, because obviously in sales, you've got to be confident and you've got to be yep. able to speak about yourself highly. Yep. So an easy one is like, we've got, uh, you know, we've got 25 interviews today. That yep. was out of about 300 people who applied. So yep. congratulations for making it through this far. Yep. Unfortunately, and you get a little takeaway, unfortunately, yep. we're only looking to take on one to two candidates, which is yep. true, right? Yep. Why would I want to select you over the other applicants? What they say is irrelevant to me. Yep. I want to see them look me in the eyes and tell me how good they are. Mm. Because that shows the confidence. Mm. And then I'll flip it and I'll go, look, for one thing I'll say is if we want a winning team, we've always said if you want a winning team, you need a team full of winners. Mm. What have you done in your life outside of work to demonstrate you're an achiever? Have you won any sort of competitions? Mm. I don't care what they say. Mm. I want to see that they've won something. We don't hire people who haven't won something in their mm. life. And mm. I mean, you will make an exception here and there. Mm. But generally, especially if it's like sport, martial arts, uh, military, dance, mm. right, that, that you actually had to compete against others. That's interesting. What traits That's are you going to steal that one if you want, right? Yeah. But what traits yeah, are you going to get? <laughs> yeah, you're going to get That's them. Interesting. You're going to yeah. get that. Yeah, they're going to be competitive. Yeah. They're going to be disciplined. They're going to yep. show up, yep. right? They're going to um, they're going to be accountable because yep. in order to get that good, if yep. something goes wrong, you can't point fingers because you can't get better from it. Mm. Right. If we're sparring and you clip me, mm. it's not because I, you know, something magic happened. I mm. started swinging and I let my hand come down. Of course, mm. you're going to clip me. Mm. That's my fault. I got to mm. remind myself to mm. learn to keep my hand up. Mm. Right. And so, uh, yeah, that's a really important trait for us there is that they've won something. Mm. But then we can flip it because if you want someone, as, especially if you're recruiting for a leadership role, mm. you need accountability and humility. Yep. Right. You need them to be able to not just think they're the best. They have to acknowledge when something, when they've done something wrong mm. so that they can fix it. If you mm. don't take control of a situation, how are you going to you know, how, how are you going to have control over something that you that you that you aren't at fault for mm. so the the question that we'll flip it with which is you you hear it a lot in interviews but you, it's again it's not what they say i don't care what they say i want to see how quickly they say it i say now look it is easy to talk about strengths in an environment like this can you tell us a bit about your weaknesses mm. and again what they say is irrelevant to me if mm. they take more than 5 seconds mm. or if they just can't think of anything at all mm. that's a narcissist and mm. if you're hiring specifically for a sales role, oh, you shit, can get that was a big that. leap. <laughs> yeah, if you're hiring, yeah, wow. Well. And, and yeah, I say that. I get, no, I, say I, that I get it though. Right? I get yeah. it. No, one hundred percent, I get that. Yeah, if they yeah. and really yeah. like, like yeah. you'll see it they'll, because they'll, it's personal honesty, uh, right? Uh, you go, hey, yeah. yeah, there are a couple of things I need to work on, and yeah. that honesty is so appreciated, right? Yeah, and sometimes yeah. they go, I'm, I'm, I'm a little dyslexic. It takes me a long time to read things, or yeah. I'm not very good with computers. Or mm. look, you don't want to hear them say something like, "I've got serious social anxiety and I'm afraid of talking to strangers." Like, yeah, yeah. Are you sure you want yeah. to be in sales? You know, yeah. but but realistically, it's just the time they take to answer. So so mm. I'm not actually I, the answers are, are irrelevant to me. It's the the way they answer them mm. that I'm looking for. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Oh, 100 percent. You're very considered. You know that. Like when when you speak in response to a question, um. You seem to have framework in your brain, right? Like you sort of know how to frame things out. Where did that come from? Like, was your dad like that? Do you get that from reading? Uh, is that is that just how you are? I, I, do you know it's fun? I mean, I, everyone has their gifts, right? Yeah. And I'm 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 incredibly deficient in other areas, right? I'm yeah, not technologically yeah, yeah. savvy. I'm yeah. not, you know, I can't even type because again, Bermuda's not like it wasn't like super first world when I was yeah. living there. Yeah. I still type with my three fingers like this, yeah. right? I um I. Like my book, my best-selling book, I actually wrote it on my iPhone in my notes because I type faster with my thumbs, 
right? So, is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> why not, right? <laughs> yeah, um, why not? Yeah. And so uh, yeah. obviously transfer it to a Word doc and then yeah, went yeah, from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have um, to do that. So, but, but one of my gifts, <clears throat> and everyone's got their gifts, is yeah. I'm really, really good at I can see something – figure out why it works and then articulate it in mm. a way that yeah. I articulate. I've never in my life had to say the phrase, you had to be there. Like mm. I can just put people and get them to understand things really, really yep. well. And yep. and that's my gift. And then when you talk about purpose, and I think this is why it gives me so much purpose, yep. is y- your purpose comes from the gifts you've been given. And you can yep. say that's from God or you can say that's from yep. wherever, but everyone's got yep. their gifts they've been given. Yep. And the trials you've had to overcome, which give yep. you the motivation yep. to, to do those things. Mm-hmm. And that's where you'll find purpose from. Mm. And so I think it's just a gift that I've been given, yeah. What do you think about passion? You know how people go, do what you're passionate about, yeah. right? And you'll be successful. What are your thoughts on that? I think if you've got it, great. Yep. I, I, like, it definitely helps, especially if you're going to start a business. It's, mm. it's a good idea to start a business in something you actually like. Mm. Um, I, look, I, it's like, you know, you can, you can have a good night without alcohol you can go out and have a fun time without yeah. alcohol yeah. but it's a lot easier right and yeah, i think yeah, yeah. you can run a good business if you don't love it especially if you're a very conscientious person mm. if you're just someone that does the things really mm. well mm. if you, you know the least the less conscientious you are the, mm. the less naturally disciplined you are mm. the more you need that passion because that's the thing that it's not about when it's good anything's mm. fun when it's good it's mm. when it's bad can you get up and go 100%. i still love this yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah i always think uh, and probably what I meant by that, and I could have phrased it better, is that you've got to do things you don't like to figure out what you do, right? 100%. So it's a journey, man. Like the, the, your first business is not going to be your passion, man. Yeah. Unless unless you're very lucky, you're artistic, or it's you're a musician or an artist, yeah. right? I get that. But but when it comes to sales and commercial business, man, it just doesn't work like that. Well, it's really funny when you talk about, especially goals within the business or where you yeah. want to where you want to go with your life, which is yeah. a, you know we kind of talk a bit about purpose. Yeah. Is a lot of people think it's it's about the the point, it's about yeah. where you're going, but a yeah. line. Is not. It has two points. It has a start and a finish, mm. right? Like my, like my, you know, my parents. They they didn't have GPS. They had paper maps. Mm. And the hardest part about, and I still remember it from when I was young. Mm. The hardest part about paper maps wasn't figuring out where you're going. Mm. The hardest part about using a paper map was figuring out where the hell you are. Mm. And I think when when people goal set, they don't account for point A. They just think mm. about point B. But mm. point A is what's what are you what are the things that you've done that you know you love? What are the things you hate? Mm. And, and that's going to give you so much more clarity on where mm. you're going once you've actually figured out, mm. what do I like? What am I good at? What do I hate? What do I suck at? Mm. And now with that information, now I can plot a good course onto where I'm going. Mm. And that's what gives you that goal. You know? mm. Mm. Um, so business planning then. Okay, let's pivot to that. So have you planned your business out? Do you strategically sit there and go, hey, here's, your, here's the next 12 months. Here's the next 12 months. And I'm going to break this down. What does that look like? It's funny. I try. The, the, yeah. I, and I do, you know, and we stick to it. We just, it, you can't do it yearly with us because it's such a volatile industry because it's so reliant on people. Because people leave and they come it's, and they go. And in a yeah, higher okay. turnover. And our turn, we, we have six times better retention than other companies because we actually won best place to work in Australia last year mm. in the great place to work survey. Mm. So we have six times better retention than the industry average, mm. but it's still like just under a year for us. Which is wow. so so wow. it's, it's hard. It's, it's not, it's, and that doesn't mean everyone. We've got people that have been with us for five years. Yeah, but it, you know, you you have to account for that because again, it's hard. Mm. It, it's it's a hard job. So so what's the average duration of your standard guy, right? Yeah, the face to face guy. So man. for us, so industry average is about sixty days. Cause wow, like is I said, that all? Because it's the throw it at the wall and see what sticks. And that's why the industry gets a bit of a bad name because you've got yeah. crappy owners yeah, yeah. who, who you know, yeah. that's just what they're used to. Yeah. And which doesn't really work when you've got to pay bases now, yeah. right? Um, yeah. But for us, it's about 272 days as, as most recently calculated, okay. which is better well, than a poke better. in the eye. Yeah, it's better. Um, and, yeah. and again, that's okay with us because we, you know, I want people to learn what they need to learn. Like, you know, 92% of businesses fail in their first two years. Mm. It's not because they're bad products. Mm. It's because the owners don't know how to sell they don't know how to inspire. They mm. don't know how to or, and create culture. Mm. They don't know how to teach things effectively, mm. right? They don't know how to manage systems, yep. and they can't handle pressure, yep. right? Those are the five things you'll learn in a year of working with us mm. and, and probably six months of working with us. So mm. I don't mind if people work with us and use it as the stepping stone it's designed to be, but I also want to be able to have an option for people that can stay with the business, love what we do, love our mm. purpose of changing mm. lives and and are making a lot of money. And we do have I've got people that are making, you know, three to five hundred grand a year well, in the team. So it's not like it's a fake, you know, it's not like it's not a real opportunity to stay here. It yeah. just takes elbow grease. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um so can you talk to me about your role in the company, right? Yeah. How long has the company been going now? About six years. About six years. Yeah. 
So are you still hands-on on the business or you sort of move back a little bit and you're focusing on the bigger picture? I, I've been like? very fortunate that, again, when you, when you can systemize well, when you can mm. actually clearly say these are the things you need to do, mm. all I need to do now is do the things, right? Mm. Is, is make sure mm. they're doing the things. Mm. And so I'll check in here and there. I definitely don't micromanage anymore and I'm, mm. not, I'm not very involved. I do have a lot of time. Mm. I, only, I only really need to spend about an hour a day on that business now. Anything mm. more than that is just because I, I want to. Mm. Um, but it's, I don't have to do, I'm kind of like the queen now. Like I just, mm. my job's just to come in and wave and, and mm. smile and just, yeah, right. just because as a leader, and this is, this is actually a really good lesson for people. <clears throat> I call it Mosesing, yeah. right? As a, as a leader, your job is to be Moses, right? Mm. And what do I mean by that? Moses, Moses, Hey guys, we're, we're leaving here. We're going over here. It's going to be awesome. Mm. And just constantly reminding everyone we're going somewhere and it's going to be awesome and you guys are all going to be better off because of it. Mm. And number two, here are the rules. Make sure everyone's doing the rules. So vision and values. If you as a leader, if all you do when you get to a point where the operations are managed by people who are competent at managing those operations, mm. my job is to is to constantly come in and remind everyone, hey, guys, we're going over here. What are your goals? Do your goals fit into here? Great. Then let's all, let's all stay aligned and work together. Mm. And hey, here are our company values and here are the things that we expect. Mm. are you adhering to those you know and let's make sure we're actually enforcing those mm. and that's really all i've got to do is just be moses now you know? mm. so what do you do with the other 15 hours of the day <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's look I, again I, I do a lot of uh i'm never not doing something like yeah. i'm i'm i like what i do so it's yeah. not there's not things i'd rather be doing yeah but it's you know i'm, I'm looking at developing the marketing side or I'm, it, mm. a lot of strategy a lot of just strategy yeah. a lot of just like, on like strategy. Yeah. getting like it, even you, like you and i you can tell yeah. when you when you there's two types of people that you deal with mm. people that you that are inflators and deflators right yep so some people you're around and you spend an hour with them and you just, ugh, it just sucks the life out of you. Yeah. And some people- Stay away from those people. Yeah, <laughs> right? But some, sometimes it's, a, it's unavoidable, right? Yeah. Um, and other people you're in a room with and you're talking for an hour and then you just, you know, you're yep. inflated. And, and yep. even like if you and I were working on a business together, yep. you know that if we just mm. did a two hour brainstorm, we'd mm. be, it'd almost be like you're high. Like you just, mm. oh my God, this, and what about this? And what about this idea? Mm. Like, and you have those kind of conversations. So I just try and fill my extra time with as many of those conversations as I can, mm. where mm. I get, hey, this person here, let's just strat it. Let's bounce ideas around for mm. here's, here's a problem. Here's where the business is going wrong, or here's a new business idea. Cause mm. I do have other businesses. I do like speaking and mm. still work on the book and stuff mm. like that as well. Yep. Um, so it's, I'm, you know, you're always doing something, but my favorite thing to fill my time with is mm. just a two-hour strategy session with someone in charge of that division, mm. and it's just fun. Like mm. business is fun when you. It do is, that. isn't it, man? Yeah. I always say that to people. I, I use the term work around most people because they then they just get it right, but it's really not, man. Dude, this year this is crazy. So I hope I get to where you're at, but I've been working seven days a week, about hundred hours a week at the moment. Wow. But I'm working a lot on strategy, and we, we're, we're taking the company, we're running to 50, right? Yeah. So we're taking the company there. So I've had to incorporate a new commercial model, new systems, new SaaS, new technology. Uh, we're inc we've set up an AI company, we're building AI platforms. Wow. So we're doing a lot, man. That's, so, that's going to take some time. So yeah. that's three to six months with really, really, really hard work. And people go, wow, man, you're going to burn out. I says, well, no, I'm not, because I love what I'm doing, right? And mm. that's just how it is, man. Yeah. Um, Hard, hard to find that and people to even get to understand that. But mind you, those are probably people who work for themselves, right? Yeah. That's, they're not... It's, and when it's yours, you know, and, and you're really... Because you're also creating a legacy. People are, are yeah. One of the bigger drivers for entrepreneurs is leaving a mark and, and creating a legacy. And mm. the whole point of that, because that actually hacks into your survival instincts, mm. which is in the reptilian part of your brain. Is, is, is that important for you, legacy? Just sorry to interrupt, but is that important for you? Uh, my, I want to change lives. I know this sounds, this sounds kind of cheesy, right? Yeah. But I think, sometimes I think about the scale of how irrelevant we are. Yeah. Right, like right now, like think about how physically big you are. Like I'm what 95 kilo, probably 100 mm. kilos. Let's be honest. I'm yeah, hey, maybe 110. Moon, maybe you know? 110. All right. <laughs> right? Like, like, <clears throat> think about how tiny, infinitesimally small we are compared yeah. to the size of the Earth. Yeah. And then think about how infinitesimally small the size of the Earth is compared to the Sun. Mm. Right. And then you think about there are 200 billion with a B, mm. billion suns mm. in our galaxy alone. Mm. And then there are 200 billion other galaxies. Mm. Like in the, in the relativity of the universe, we mean yeah. nothing. Yeah. But what about that one person yeah. whose life you changed? Yeah. Who, if they were going this way, you came in this way. I've had people that have worked with me that said, hey, look, I, I want you to know that a week before this job, I'd actually bought the stuff I needed to kill myself. 
And yep. now I've actually learned because I've, I've got goals and I've got the right people oh, around really? me. I've changed myself. Wow. Yeah, I'll get emotional talking about it too much. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, but that, like that, it's like how many of those, because for that yeah. person, yeah. how big of an impact do you have? So yeah. for me, if I'm, th- I'm thinking about how to be relevant, because we all want to be relevant and we all want to yeah. leave some sort of mark. Yeah. For yeah. me, it's how many lives can I change? And I've got this mm. beautiful vessel of you do two months of hard work working with me. And I give you my word, your life will be changed forever forever mm. Mm. and and i owe it to those people who mm. haven't started to the company yet for me to work mm. my ass off to mm. get there mm. and, and and i think that that really you know i guess just looking at legacy for mm. me it's how many lives i can change because i don't, I, I don't know if you realize dude but that's your mtp right your massive transformative purpose because when you spoke about that story just that little instance man there's that spark right you're going wow so now i know why you do it you're yeah. not doing it for the money. The money's great, right? Don't money's get me great. wrong. It's not going to get you out of bed, though. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And that's what's going to keep you happy and keep going. Yeah. Um, so, Fcom, um, what's what's the deal in the next three to five, man? Like, where's the, where's the company going? Or are you going to set up other companies? Well, this is actually really fun. So, could, because basically we've, even though it's technically like sales and marketing, we've basically yeah. just been mercenaries for hire, selling other people's yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I, I realize, like, especially subscription services, mm. like, why am I not selling my own thing? Why are mm. we not selling our own product and our own thing? Because we've, you know, expansion's been great and we've got offices in, you know, Brisbane, Gold Coast, Sunny Coast. We've just mm. opened in New Zealand this year. Mm. So we're still expanding pretty consistently. Mm. But I realize that, that we're talking to 2,000 people a day. Mm. A, a day are speaking to wow. our staff, right? Because wow. we have about 40, 50 staff wow. that, they're, that they're speaking to. And none of them know who FCOM is. They have no mm. idea what, what our company is. Mm. And, I, and I just realized that needs to change, right? Because mm. it's, that's free market. That's 2,000 free good impressions. That How much would you pay for that on social media? You know, yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, right. And especially good ones that cut through the clutter because you're actually talking to somebody. Yeah. Um, and and so, so the big thing that's on the horizon, I just had a really big meeting about it today, yeah. is launching our own product. And that's looking, looking really sexy. I can't say too much about it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's, that's the next big thing is just being able to actually market it our way. Is it a physical product or is it else? No, nah, it's a service. It's, it's, yeah. got a, it's definitely yeah. got a charitable component to it as well. Yeah, awesome. One thing for me is I just I want to make sure that every company that we work with and everything we do helps yeah. not just us because if we're going to be transforming lives, it just feels very on brand mm. for us to be you know mm. dealing with either non for profits or you know or mm. at least having some sort of benevolent kickback to it that mm. helps not just us. Mm. Um, but that so that's the next step. So it's, it's exciting. Yeah, you're, you're like me, dude. I, I think there's all, there always needs to be an element of contribution, right? You yeah. have to give something back, man, to balance the universe out, right? Yeah. I don't know why I, I say that, but I've always just felt that way. Well, read, read any autobiography, right? Like they, 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 they'll go through their hard upbringing and then they'll yeah. do these awesome things and some of them you'll remember yeah. and all that. And yeah. then what's the, the last two chapters of any autobiography is yeah. now let me tell you about my philanth- philanthropic efforts. Yeah. They always end with, cha- with yeah. Charity, and I just figure yeah. like I've always been the type of type of guy. If you if you let me have a buffet, I'll go to the dessert first, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 that's kind of so so making sure yeah. that we're it's definitely one hundred and twenty. Okay, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> so we're definitely doing that, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. I love that. Um, so there's a couple of things I just I just before we leave this conversation, and we're, yeah. we're getting close to the end. Uh, there's a, there's a couple of things that are really nice all about you, dude. And, and I don't know where you get them from, but that element of contribution is pretty strong. I don't know if you know that about yourself, man. It's like super super strong. Um. The framework that you get in your head when you talk about things, I find super interesting because you're you seem to have a lot of knowledge. So I'm assuming you read a lot of books, right? Yeah, like a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm nerdy. I'm very because yeah, yeah. remember, I said, it, like I, I said, if you want to be great at anything, no more, yeah. do more. And yeah. so for me, people people don't take education as a competition, especially yeah. business owners, right? Yeah. Most of us want to be the best at whatever we're doing, and mm. and I just real I wake up every day going, no one's going to outlearn me. Because if I'm getting better faster than anyone's getting better, mm. even if you're better than me now, mm. well, you're not going to be, you know, eventually. Mm. And mm. so, so for me, I think I just look at education like a competition, mm. and there, and then, and then you just have this wealth of knowledge that you can just draw from any time. Mm. That that especially if someone is going through something when mm. it's when it comes to human behavior or psychology, where you mm. can just give them this like they they think their marriage is about to end, and you go, "Have you tried this?" Mm. And like, oh. Okay, mm. and so so for me, I'm just. I'm, Have you done any psychology study? Is that I, being I don't part think of your you background? Need to. Yeah. I don't think you need to because most of psychology is just research. And yeah. the funny thing about psychology degrees, this is really interesting, is sixty percent of people who get a psychology bachelor's are crazy. Well, yeah, they're nuts. <laughs> yeah, you, you yeah, date yeah. enough psychology students, yeah. you, you'll pick yeah, that yeah, up yeah, pretty quickly. Right, yeah. <laughs> but because they want to, they want to help people in ways that they need that help. Right, yeah, so it's not it's not yeah. from a bad yeah. place. No, I get that. But only you need a master's in order to practice psychology, and only mm. about thirty percent of mm. people who get a psychology bachelor mm. do a master's because it's way harder. Mm. 
order and you've got to be top of your class to get in. Mm. Um, so, I, and so I think that model, you, you're not going to learn much there. I just learned mm. from books. I really, and I'm mm. very nerdy about it because mm. like I'll, I can like draw you a brain and map you all the individual parts of what each part of the brain does. Like mm. I get very nerdy about that yeah, right. because for me, I, I'm never satisfied until I get to the deepest why. I yep. need to know that, that I need to know exactly how each cog works yep. a, a, in order to really be confident delivering. So, and yep. what you'll find there is maybe I'll find that maybe this why might be a lowest common denominator. So, yep. for instance, like how do you network effectively? How are you a good yep. networker? And then how do you build rapport with a customer on the door? You'd think those are two separate things, mm. but then realizing, well, why does rapport work? Well, because if you get to the deepest one, people want to know that you're not going to kill them. <laughs> and so they <laughs> like to, that's seriously why, mm. with the reason we're friends with anybody mm. is because we can figure out this person has similar values to me, mm. which means I can predict they're less likely to kill me. And this all mm. happens in your limbic part of your brain. So mm. you don't actively think it. Mm. But no, nine times out of 10, when you make friends with someone, it's just because you have things in common that you like or don't like. Yep. And you have enough things in common you like or don't like, you become friends. Yep. And being able, so you can make anyone like you in 20 seconds by just finding things, getting them talking about things they like, mm. and then finding common ground on those things. Mm. And people like you. Well, that, knowing that, that's the deepest why is they know they know your values, so they know they're not gonna, you're not going to kill them. You can now use that in a business networking event when you'd think those two concepts are totally unrelated. So, do you do you train that broadly? Like, like I get that, and I think there's also part of skill set in that vertical. But do you train that broadly to your team, your sales team, or do you provide that to them in a document or a script and just get them to learn how to speak? Or, or do you let do you give them freedom, let them use their own behaviors and personalities, but wrap something around that? Yeah, look, I teach systems, not styles. Everyone's yeah, okay. gonna. You don't want robots, right? Yeah, you want yeah, you want that. people to do it their way. Yeah. You just want to give them the why. You yeah. want to give them, hey, the reason this works is because of this. If yeah. you've got a better way of doing this, yeah. go for go for gold. Yeah. As long as the results are happening, I'm yeah. not gonna. You know, if the results aren't happening mm. and you're doing it this way, let's mm. try doing it the way that works, mm. and then try and change it again mm. once you got your momentum back. You mm. know? For all the business owners out there, talk to me about execution. I want to get your take on that because you're um, you're quite academic how you think and process. So talk to me about execution. How important that is. So so this is a this is a really mm. funny way to. Because you're right, execution's everything, right? Yep. Especially for aspiring business owners. Yeah, yeah. They, they, come they to struggle you, with it, man. Well, they come to you these the great ideas. Oh, I've got this idea. We're going to start yeah. importing these and it's going to do this. I'm going to, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. But the yeah. idea is not worth anything if you can't execute it. If you can't yeah. market it and sell it and then consistently get results for it. Yeah. So, so execution shoots. The, the way that I describe <clears> it to my managers when I talk about execution, because yeah. you've got to plan. It's planning and execution. Yeah. It's what are the things I need to do in order and then let's do those in order of importance. Mm. So, you know, so it's planning and discipline, right? Yep. Um, but the way that I describe it to my managers is do the things. Mm. And it's like, what, like, it's that simple. If you mm. want to be great. So for us, good is... Uh, do the out. hard things, right? Yeah, well, just yep. do the things, do the right? Things. Do the yeah. things. And, and it literally is as simple as, right? Like, here are all the things you need to do. Right. Yep. Check on your guys. Check, you know, check in on them. Just make mm. some time for them outside of work. Mm. Make sure that you're talking about this thing. Make sure you're talking about this thing. Make sure you're checking this metric. Mm. Right. Here's a list of all the things. And if you want to be great, which means you increase the headcount of your team and mm. you increase the amount of sales per person per, per day or mm. per week, whatever mm. it is, whatever your metric mm. is. Yep. Right. That that's great to be really good. You got to you get you you're growing and you're hitting big results, mm. right? Yep. To be great at that, all you have to do is remember to do the things, and more importantly, have ways of remembering to do the things. Because mm. if you, you can ask around to find mm. what the things are, mm. but then it's about the discipline to do them. And mm. for me, uh, first thing, get the checklist out of the drawer. <laughs> get the checklist, right? Get the checklist, and and yep. it is literally have an alarm in your phone that says yep. review plan, yep. review notes, yep. review, and and if you can format things into an easy framework where they're yep. easy to understand with good yep. metaphors and stuff. Yep. That's great. That's yep. my job though. That's yep. not their job. Yep. Their job is here's the thing. If you if you do all of these things, yep. there is no universe that you don't get yeah. the results you want. Yep. Do the things. Execution yep. to me is do the things and more importantly, especially because unless you're like super, super owl, conscientious yep. type personality because yep. they normally don't forget things, mm. find ways to remember to do the things. If that's post-it notes in different places, if that's background on your phone, if it's reminders or alarms that go off in your phone. Mm. For me, I'll do Siri reminders is a big mm. one. I'll, I'll have a meeting with somebody about a skill they're trying to develop and then I go, when do you want me to check in with you on this and they'll go uh two weeks and, and in two weeks time you can give me your word that you're going to be nailing this thing yes mm. hey siri set a reminder it's good what do you want to be reminded about i go mm. talk to dave about following up on this skill make sure he's doing it mm. and then set and then two mm. weeks from now i'll get a reminder that's, ooh, and i'll call dave and i'll say hey dave i'm mm. you know remember when you said <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> how are you doing so, with that hey another question for you before we wrap up um how do you handle 
the hits, man. Like when you're having a bad day and something goes seriously wrong, and you because it happens, right? Yeah. T- talk to me about your psychology around that and how you handle that. We preach. We call it shit sandwich tolerance, right? Yeah. So your uh, your ability to be great as a leader, right, is your ability to eat a shit sandwich and ask mm. for more. Mm. And everyone's got a limit of your mm. shit sandwich tolerance. But the upside is, is when you find your limit. You, then you know you'll go for a holiday or something. There'll be something that resets you. But I think Goggins calls it a jar of fuck. Oh, okay, that's cool. Well, that's yeah. There you go. go. Yeah. Right. So, um, but for <clears> me, it's like it's how many shit sandwiches can you eat? Yeah. And when you get good enough at eating, when you're exposed enough to shit sandwiches, mm. right? You start laughing when you get them. You know mm. you're really screwed when you start mm. laughing. Mm. And then it's like okay, cool, because people, normal people, people who want an average life, mm. they don't have to eat those shit sandwiches. They can have steak. Right, mm. they can have, they can eat whatever they want. Mm. It's it's when I hit the hard, the bumps, I remind myself that I want more than somebody else wants, and mm. so it's a good thing. If mm. I'm not getting these problems, I'm not doing something wrong. I mean, mm. I'm not doing something wrong. Right. Yeah. So yeah. so it's. I mean, they're, they're never fun, but I just you just get good at eating them, and they just don't bother. The the more that you come back from from getting knocked down, the more mm. you just go. Well, I don't get knocked out. I just get knocked mm. down. I can do this. I can handle this. Mm. And you just toughen up. But man, what about the really big stuff? Like, have you ever gotten to the point in your company where, hell, I could lose all of this, man? Like, you told me you told me about the two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and that was that one of those times in your in, in your business career where you thought, shit, I could lose my company here. <sighs> Look, you, you don't want to get into business if you don't have thick skin. If yep. you don't, you know, you like, I yep. always think about that Tyson Fury Deontay Wilder fight mm. where he literally like he's, he's at an, mm. an eight count and he's just get, gotten hit by the hardest puncher in the world mm. and his eyes open and he just gets up like the Undertaker yeah. and just stands yeah. up and it's yeah. like. What do you mean? And yeah. I, I, I draw inspiration from that yeah. of like, uh, you know, just moments like that where you're like, people just want it more. Yeah. And so I've, ne- I've never been beaten so badly that mm. I want to quit yeah. because you only lose if you quit. Mm. Otherwise, you just run out of time. Mm. And, and I, I, so I don't, I've never really been, I've, don't get me wrong, I've been tested and I've had things that um, would make other people quit, mm. but it's just not who I am. Yeah. And I think, I think reminding yourself who you are, yeah. I think is the secret out of them, you know? That might be in your DNA, man. I, I think it's in mine as well. Right? I can get hit, man. I just keep just you just got to keep moving. And right? That's what separates you. Yeah. Um. And and, and sometimes, um, man, some people get hit and they just fall over and they never get back up, which is which is unfortunate. Um, What's well, unfortunate for them? It's yeah. Well, it is for them because it is. sometimes yeah. so, you know there's there's the old there's an old analogy. I really, I like this one. It's a little bit cliche mm. in sales, right? But mm. but have you heard the one about the Chinese bamboo? No, I haven't. No. So this is really interesting, right? So, so Chinese bamboo, it's a, it's a very funny plant because yeah. they use it for everything. It's really, yeah. really useful. They do their scaffolding with it. Yeah. Like it's, it's yeah. strong, really strong. Yeah. But what happens is a Chinese bamboo will grow, I think like up to like, like 100 feet, so like 30 mm. meters mm. in 90 days, mm. right? But it takes about three to four years for the roots to go down deep enough and for it to grow mm. for it to actually sprout. And then mm. once it sprouts, it goes up. But mm. you imagine that there's a, you're a farmer mm. and you're doing Chinese bamboo and then some guy mm. next to you is doing corn. Mm. And like three years in, mm. like, he's like, dude, what are you doing? You know, mm. what are you, bro, you're watering that ground, mm. toiling that ground, watering that ground for three mm. years. Nothing's happened. You mm. could have been growing corn all this time. What are mm. you doing? And he's like, ah, I just have faith, mm. right? And, mm. and you, you, those those people that quit, sometimes they quit right before that bamboo starts to sprout. Mm. And I just don't, uh, I don't ever want to be that guy. Mm. People overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in 10, right? Mm. Yeah, cool. Dude, it's been great to talk to you. It's been awesome, you. yeah. Um, a couple of things I want to say. Um, you got a lot of energy, man. I love that, dude. I Appreciate think that's super it's getting great. me to turn it off is the tricky part. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you shouldn't do that though, right? And, and I think people, some people freak out about it. I said, man, is he always like that? I bet you they say that about you, right, when you walk away. Yeah. Uh, which is cool. Uh, super inspiring. I think you're full of contribution. I think you've got a good message. Uh, and I love the way you're on a sales team, dude. I don't think I've met somebody who is as detailed and systematic as you are building and running and recruiting a sales team, so you should be proud of that. I really appreciate it. Yeah, cool, man. Really good to meet you. It's been awesome. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, bro. Thank you so much for tuning in to Business Beats Podcast today. Look, we hope you enjoyed the episode as much as we enjoyed putting it together for you. Every story we share and every conversation we have, it's all part of a bigger picture. Connecting with you, our listener, and pushing out value. That's what we're here for. If you like what you heard today and want to be part of our growing community, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribing not only gives you automatic updates for new episodes, but also access to other cool stuff, soon to be released books, courses, and more. Your engagement truly makes a difference, and we sincerely appreciate it.